welcome to the back of the classroom. Today, we're going to talk about how your body is not just a temple, but it's a machine. And we're going to talk about how we're going to keep this machine up and running. First, we're going to start off by thanking our supporter from Magical Pose. Magical Pose is a clothing line for men, women, and most teens. You can find them on Instagram at Magical Pose, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-P-O-S-E. That's Instagram, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-P-O-S-E. And their website is MagicalPose.com, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-P-O-S-E dot C-O-M. Again, their website, Magical Pose, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-P-O-S-E dot com. And if you want to discount, go ahead and use MP. REL333 at checkout, M-P-R-E-L-333 at checkout. And due to COVID, shipping delays average from 7 to 14 days after processing. Your first email will be your receipt, and you'll get a second email when that package is shipped with the tracking information. Sorry for delay, folks. I know a lot of people have uh, looked for their product, and it could take a while, but bear with them. And I'd like to also thank all those who've been donating and I appreciate the likes, the comments, the reposts, the shares, people who saved the video to queue it up later to show their friends and show other people. It definitely helps this platform grow. I humbly thank you. Appreciate the love. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, and then we have those who have interest in donating and helping out this platform grow outside of sharing and um, having your friends and family check it out. You can help donate my cash app, dollar sign, K-I-N-G-R-E-L-333. Cash app, dollar sign, K-I-N-G-R-E-L-333. Uh, if you want to reach out via PayPal, you can P-A-Y-P-A-L dot me forward slash rail jackson that will be p-a-y-p-a-l dot m-e forward slash r-e-l j-a-c-k-s-o-n anybody who want to reach out to me on social media you can find me on twitter king rail 333 k-i-n-g-r-e-l 333 facebook rail jackson r-e-l J A C K S O N. Instagram, Rel Jackson. R E L J A C K S O N. And YouTube, you can find me on YouTube as well. Rel Jackson, R E L J A C K S O N. That's R E L J A C K S O N. Yes. Your body is more than just a temple, your body is a machine. It requires nutrients. It requires motion. It has to move because it's a machine. Machines move. Machines have intricate parts and pieces and different things that require mobility. And without mobility, you get stiff, you get stuck. And like most um, certain materials, you get a certain rust and deterioration. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not a trainer i'm not a licensed trainer anyway i just you know i pay attention um i do my research i look into things because i'm just genuinely curious i try to find people who uh who think along the same lines i do the open mind the upcoming research i've paid for different workout routines um i think the first workout routine i actually purchased was a Ben Pakowski. Uh, he had a hypotrophy, 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 hypotrophy workout routine. And I definitely put on masks. I loved his workout routine. It was detailed, spoke on nutrition, how to eat. Um, and I, I definitely was able to um, keep up with that. I did it for a year. I went from 175 pounds <clears throat> to 200 pounds. Um, 
Then I had to, uh, situation change, move, didn't have access to the type of equipment, so I had to switch it up a little bit. But again, just wanting to keep looking into different workout routines, and I wanted to, you know, improve my education. I believe you got to get more than one source of information. It's part of research. Get more than one source of information and figure it out. Then I come across... Um, a YouTube person. He had a different platform, and then he ended up switching over to Pump Chasers. I'll let him explain the story. He tells it better, way better than I can. Um, and his is Pump Chasers. I believe his name is Chris Jones. Very intelligent guy. Um, again, both of these gentlemen have years of research, years of experience, years of just putting out content so you can see their development and their growth and they go, you know, back and forth with, you know, where they were to show you where they are now. And I'm telling you, these guys both intellectually, I've gravitated more to Chris Jones. I guess he's more my age. I can relate to him more. And he's definitely more inspirational, more entertaining, you know, gives you more information, gives you more of a hands-on. He also has merchandise and apparel. Um, I actually have on one of his shirts right now. Um, go ahead and check him out on Instagram and uh, YouTube. I think those are um, some definitely interesting um, platforms where you can learn a lot, as if you're interested. Um, so some of the things I've learned is your body needs certain things to survive. You need vitamins. You need minerals. Right. So simply put, I did some research. And again, this is just mine. I recommend everybody do their own because everybody's bodies are different. A Honda, a Ford, a Chevy, different cars require different types of maintenance. I don't expect what my body needs for you to for it to be your body needs. So, you know, you take everything as far as what I say and it's just an idea. This is just what works for me. Um, I recommend everybody do their own research. If you need, you know, find a, uh, your doctor. And, you know, after you do some research, run it by your doctor and see, you know, how things, you know, how what your doctor says. So from my research, I've come across the minerals, water, and soluble. So from what I've seen, we need biotin. I think that's like... VB7, anywhere from 30 to 100 milligrams of that. We need folic acid, niacin, uh, pantothenic acid, riboflavin, thiamine, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, fat soluble, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. Um, then they have major minerals, calcium, Fluoride, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, sulfur. Then you got something called trace minerals. You got chromium, copper, fluoride, iodine, iron, manganese, molybdenum. I think I said that right. Selenium and zinc. Our body needs these minerals to, um, to you know, work properly. So then, you go, all right, you got these uh, different things. Where do you get it from? So biotin can be found in cauliflower, eggs, almond, salmon, sweet potato, salmon, avocado, spinach, peanut. Uh, what's this? Uh, bananas, walnut, carrot, oat, milk, onions, tuna, and broccoli. Folic acid can be found in leafy greens like spinach. You got citrus fruit like orange, beans, bread, cereal, rice, pasta, uh, niacin. You can get that from peanuts, peas, brown rice, tuna, turkey, salmon, sunflower seeds, chicken, avocado, sweet potato, potatoes, liver, asparagus, sardines, beef, nectarine, broccoli, and lentil. Pentothenic acid. I think I said that right. 
again, you can get that from animal protein, avocado, broccoli, kale, eggs, legumes, lentils, means, lentils, milk, mushrooms, organ meat, which is like kidney and liver. Riboflavin, you can get that from eggs, organ meats, again, kidney and liver, greens, veggies, cereal, bread, and grains. Thiamine, you can get that from seafood, lean meats, poultry, eggs, legumes, nuts, seeds, pork, and fish. Vitamin B26, you can get that from pork, poultry, fish, bread, whole grains, eggs, veggies. Vitamin B12, you can get that out of eggs, salmon, beef, tuna, clams, rainbow trout, breakfast cereal, sardines, turkey, chicken, milk liver, yogurt, pork, Swiss cheese, oyster, shrimp, prawn. Then you have vitamin A, turkey, beef, pork, chicken, paprika, chili, sweet potato, cereal, breakfast, breakfast cereal, carrots, kale, milk. Vitamin B12, you can find that in beef, liver, chicken, fish, breakfast cereals, yogurt, cheese, and eggs. Uh, vitamin D, you get that from fatty fish like tuna, salmon. You can get it in orange juice, cereal, beef, liver, cheese, eggs, egg yolk. Vitamin E, sunflower seeds, almond, avocado, spinach, butternut, squash, kiwi fruit, broccoli, trout, olive oil, shrimp. Vitamin K, kale, scallions, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, prunes, cucumber, Calcium, you can get that from almond, kale, broccoli, sardines. I believe that says sesame, common fig, okra, yogurt, oranges, chai seeds, soybean, cheese, sweet potatoes, collard greens, spinach, vanilla, ice cream. Then it's chloride, you can get that from table salt, sea salt. Seaweed, rye, tomatoes, lettuce, celery, olives. Then magnesium, you can find in almond, spinach, dark chocolate, bananas, avocado, brown rice, pumpkin seed, peanut butter, nuts, cashews, whole grains, sunflower seeds, legume, oatmeal. Potassium, you can find in orange juice, tomato juice, prune juice, apricot juice, grapefruit juice. Sulfur, you can... Get that out of garlic, chives, onions, cheddar, cheese, Parmesan cheese, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, and organ meat. Chromium, you can get that out of broccoli, green beans, oat, tomato, barley, romaine lettuce, beef, eggs, apples, black pepper, brown rice, bananas, potatoes, chicken, grape, juice, and corn and orange juice. Copper, you can get from organ meats, oysters, spirulina, nuts, seeds, lobster, leafy greens, dark chocolate. Iodine, you can get from seaweed, cod, which is a fish, dairy, iodine, salt, shrimp, tuna, eggs, and prunes. Iron, a lot of people are iron deficient. You can get that from spinach, lentil, dark chocolate, broccoli, oyster, strawberries, liver, Raisin, pumpkin seed, turkey, breakfast cereal, sardines, chicken, dried apricot, baked potato, clams, prune, nuts, eggs, tomatoes, sweet potato, veal, tuna, peas, cashews, shrimp, and prawn, kale and greens. Magne- manganese, you get that from almond, pecan, legumes, oatmeal, bran cereal, whole wheat bread, brown rice, leafy greens, pineapple, IK and dark chocolate. Molly denim. Denim. Molly denim. M O L Y D D E N A M. You can get that from eggs, tomatoes, kidney beans, and yogurt. Forgive my mispronunciation of that word. Then you have selenium. <clears throat> You can get that from Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, eggs, brown rice, turkey, chicken, shrimp, prawn, oats, spinach, sardines, pork, pasta noodles, beef, liver, oyster, 
uh, mushroom, salmon, tuna, mussels, beans, lentil, lobster, pinto beans, and chai seeds. And zinc, you can get that from meats, red meats, shellfish, legumes, seeds, nuts, dairy, eggs, whole grains, potatoes, sweet potatoes, kale, dark chocolate. Now, a common theme that I hear in a lot of these things that we need revolve around bananas, oranges, pineapples, spinach, broccoli, kale, eggs, and chicken. But even if, let's say, you were vegan, you didn't eat animal proteins, there's still a lot of fruits and vegetables you can eat that gives you the same nutrients. In fact, everything that I read at some point or another, you can get from nuts, vegetables, I guess legumes, lentils, um, and vegetables and fruit. So everything that comes from the earth, your body can definitely use to give your body the nutrients, the fuel you need to survive. It gives your brain its ability to think cognitively. Um, and again, consult your doctor. See what works well for you. Me, I've gone from having three meals a day to two meals a day. Um, I feel less sluggish. I feel lighter. Um, what I lost in energy, I made up for in thinking cognitively. I can think a little bit more clearer. Um, and again, my stamina is going back up since I changed my workout routine, which goes into the next, um, part of this well-oiled machine. But one thing I am looking forward to seeing is a periodic table for food, veggies, fruits, nuts, vitamins, minerals, these different things, I think. And we got one on the elements. I think we need one for food. As in what's more nutritious, what's more beneficial, what our body needs. And then we can structure our meal plans around it. And we can start from the very basics. And then even then, that goes with, if all these things come from the earth, then we should be able to plant these seeds. We should be able to grow it for ourselves so we can survive off of it and so we can live. So we all come together as a people. We all establish a baseline and communicating with one another. We talk about how we want to raise our children and then we understand how life works and now we got to make sure we can sustain ourselves with our nutrients and if the stores are closed if we can't happen to get somewhere to get the things that we need we have to be able to sustain ourselves so we should learn how to plant some of these vegetables we should learn how to barter with those who grow some of the things we can't grow or have some of the things we don't have. Take it back to the day where, you know, the bartering system was, hey, I can grow a lot of kale, and you can grow a lot of spinach, and you can grow a lot of fruit, and everybody just exchange goods. And everybody, again, in this village can, you know, come together, and everybody can help one. Um, and then the other part is training, exercise. Our bodies require the ability to move. We can't grow. We can't educate ourselves. We can't be a better productive person and village if we're just sitting around not doing anything. And, you know, training and exercise vary from different things. You wake up in the morning, stretch. Even if you stretch for 45 minutes, allow your body and you know, the muscles to, you know, open up and contract, get the blood flowing. Or maybe if you did a little bit of walking for an hour, that helps. Believe it or not, reading, your brain is the largest, it's the strongest muscle in your body. And reading, um, doing puzzles, crosswords, Sudoku, chess, anything that stimulates the mind, it's going to allow your brain to 
well for me anyway. It helps me think a little bit faster. My processing of information and ideas work a little bit faster. I'm what you might consider an overthinker. I think of, I take one situation and I think of so many different ways that situation can play out until I'm like mentally exhausted. But the more I've been reading, the more I've been, you know, doing research and trying to improve myself, I realize I can think a lot longer with a lot more content and figure out what I want to say, how I want to say it, what I want to do, how I want to go about doing, actually come up with an actionable plan. And I can think about all the variables and how things can go wrong and what I want to prevent, what direction I want things to go. And I would push toward that. Um, And then there's also the physical activities, hunting, combat training. We have to be able to defend ourselves. We have to be able to hunt for food, for people who eat meat. Um, There's certain skills that you'd want to develop as a people, as a village. On top of needing to defend yourself, you also need to be able to hunt for food if you need to. You know, some days you can't store as much vegetables as you'd like to, or, you know, crops didn't come in. You might have to hunt some animals. You know, not everybody do, but for those who feel the need to, that's something you just don't want to go outside and do just because the situation calls for it. Anything that you feel you like and you'd want, you'd have to consider what happened if your means of getting it no longer existed. What if you had to go out there and get it yourself? These are the things that we'd have to learn to do for ourselves in order to keep ourselves, our family, and our uh, village, our people, our neighbors. We want to keep them and ourselves healthy. We want to. We don't want to feel like we're hopeless and helpless. We want to be able to do things for ourselves. So, if we can focus on doing those things. You know, we'd have a, a clearer mind, there's less panic, there's more structure and organization when it comes to uh, making these things happen. Uh, I personally believe, take an hour out your day to do some reading. Take an hour out your day to do some puzzles. You know, program yourself to learn to do certain things. I mean, if you think back to when you was in school, you did things, class was about 40 to 45 minutes. So if you give yourself 40, 45 minutes per topic, learn to hunt for 45 minutes, do some research for 45 minutes, exercise, walk, stretch, do these different things for 45 minutes. Allow yourself to block everything else out. Focus on just that. And give it six weeks. Give it two months. See how better your body feels. See how much of an improvement you feel. Um, it's all about eating the proper amount. I think we're eating too much condensed garbage. You go to McDonald's and you look at the menu, one meal can almost be 15,000 calories. If one meal is 15,000 calories, and if you're 200 pounds and you stick to 2,000 calorie regimen, what's lunch, what does breakfast and dinner look like? So naturally, if your calorie count's high, you're gonna get, you're gonna gain weight. So if you don't eat all day and all you have is McDonald's, you might lose weight. But then the other part of that would be the nutrient value. Are you getting all of your vitamins and minerals? Are you getting the proper nutrition your body needs to sustain itself? Lack of proper nutrients, lack of proper vitamins, not going outside to be in the sun, all these different things can have an adverse reaction to your health. You might spend more time in a doctor's office just to make up for what you're missing. Then they have supplements that's out in the market that is geared toward giving you the things you're not getting from your regular diet. But with the information I just shared with you and that you can you know, do your own research and see what you need, what your body needs and what foods you like and where you can get 
you know these things readily accessible how to prepare it um and you know just make it more appealing for your palate so you can consume it and not dread eating it these are the things that are we should look into as people you know let's not wait for other people to tell us what we should eat and what we should do let's look into our own health and then let's teach our children let's teach our friends our neighbors you know some of this information as far as what's good to eat what's beneficial what's helpful you might be able to help them out teach them something you know different foods have different benefits for the body and I guess we can get into that later but you know your muscles require certain type of vitamins and minerals your brain and the way it processes information it requires certain amount of nutrients vitamins and minerals your skin your hair your eyesight your sense of smell everything requires vitamins and minerals it needs certain nutrients so that because everything breaks down and everything you know rebuilds itself your skin believe it or not your skin is an organ which means it breaks itself down because you know you put your skin peels right even when you're outside in the sun and you tan your skin tans it peels it comes off you have reskin that regenerated where does that come from obviously it comes from the foods that you eat um, so the different foods you eat definitely play a factor in your health and in your well-being and then of course the more you exercise the more your cardiovascular is up to part your cardiovascular system is your heart pumping your veins your arteries right so your heart is a major organ that pumps the blood it pumps the blood through your veins those veins extend throughout your body and your arteries are like a booster it's in different parts of the body that assist in pushing that blood that it just received forward and it helps keep pushing the blood throughout you know the rest of your body and what that blood is doing is it's transporting the, th the food the nutrients that you ate from the food that you've digested so the more nutrients you can pack into your blood the more your blood can transport that nutrients to the rest of your body when you think about it every part of your body has blood in it and that's because it requires nutrients to get to the different parts of your body so it can feed it but not only does it feed it it also takes the garbage it takes the uh, unnecessary waste and it takes it and then it filters it through if you have a lot of greasy food you notice when you sweat it pushes it out uh, you also noticed when you eat too much of a certain thing your urine can come out smelling different differently and it looks different um, so drink more water urine comes out clear just because there's less waste in your body the more waste in your body the more it comes out looking different so these are certain things to look for um, Again, these are just some of the things that I've researched and heard through. I ask a lot of questions when I go to doctors and I see people. So I just recommend everybody have those conversations. There's nothing you can't talk about. Don't feel like, oh, this is embarrassing. Listen, when you, what you don't know, ask questions. Do the research. Take your research. Consult a doctor. It's the same thing you was taught in school. You go somewhere, you do your research. And then you take your research and you go to a doctor. Be like, hey, listen, I, you know, I heard I should exercise at least 45 minutes a day. What do you think? And then the doctor will tell you based on what you might not know about your physical condition, what's best for you and what's not best for you. And then you take that and then you build yourself and you get better. And then you can go back to the doctor in three, six months to a year up to what, you know, your doctor says you should do. And let them know what you've done. Let them know what you've accomplished and see if he'll let you do something else oh well you know this is looking good and that's looking good yeah keep doing that and then try you know he might give you something else to go on and you go back and you improve on that and you keep going and you keep striving to be better and better and better like let's not use the doctor's office just as a place to go because you're not feeling well 
let's not use the doctor's office just to go when you think you're coming down with a cold. You know, let's take preventative measures. Let's let's eat better. Let's work out. Let's train more. You know, let's take this information back to the doctor. You know, even when it comes to the dentist, you gotta eat certain. You gotta eat food, right? Go to the dentist. Get your teeth checked out. You know, get them clean. You gotta remove the calcium. You wanna remove, you know, any plaque, the gingivitis, because you wanna be able to eat comfortably. You know, you don't wanna. Uh, ruin your teeth and not be able to eat you know that'll definitely mess up your appetite then you'd have to do smoothies and there's nothing wrong with smoothies smoothies definitely help you get the nutrients to your body quicker because if you really think about it you're chewing your food to make it almost like liquid because your body doesn't take solid foods and move it throughout your body remember your blood is absorbing the nutrients which means you got to chew it, break it down. Your saliva breaks it down even more. It makes it like it's liquid so your body can absorb it and then spread it out to the rest of your body. So drinking water, definitely helpful. It helps to process that. It helps it process. It helps it deliver it. Keeps your organs moist and flexible. You know, you know do the research. I feel as if there's a lot of things we don't know and you know a lot of people scared to go to the doctor don't want to go to the doctor but I'll be honest with you just like anything anybody else tells you you can choose what you do with that information the doctor can tell you oh you gotta do this 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 and this it's up to you to go do it it's information he's giving you a recommendation he strongly urges certain things for your health and well-being and he's only giving you that information based on what he learned and what he was taught. He's not the, he's not going to do research on the newest and, and latest thing when there are people who are paid to do that. There are people who are paid to look up these uh, medic medications that is pushed out into the world, into the clinics, and into the pharmacies, you know? He does his job, he goes home, he needs to relax, he needs to recuperate, he needs to spend time with his family, and he comes back and he has to trust the word of the people who provides the medication. You know, he might look into it. I'm not a doctor, I can't tell you what they do. I would like to think they look into the information and the uh, drugs that they give, but they pretty much know what it does. And if there's anything that comes back, I'm pretty sure they get the uh, first-hand account. And hey, listen. If you don't know, ask him. Ask your doctor, hey, so do you know what's in this? Do you know what it does, the side effects? You know what I mean? You took an oath to do no harm, so I would like to think you're not going to, you know, do something that's going to harm me. Let them look into it. Is it something that you feel isn't right for you? Something's not quite right after you take it? Call your doctor. Let them know what's going on. Let them switch it up. Like, don't feel limited in your ability to ask questions and take action. You can definitely ask all the questions you want before taking something. And get as much information as possible. Do your own research. Take that back to the doctor and have a conversation. When your doctor asks you, do you have any questions for me? Pull out a piece of paper and ask all the questions you've written down. Like, get to the bottom of what you've looked into, your concerns, because a lot of times we don't trust people because we don't feel like they relate, but we don't have the conversations with them. I'm going to doctors and I start asking all types of questions. And you'll be surprised how open they are with just talking to you. I mean, there are people too. You can have a conversation with your doctor, have a good laugh, and they'll be very honest and blunt with you about what it is that they know. Don't just be another number. When you start meeting people, engage with them, have those conversations. Allow your doctor to know who you are as a person. Allow them to know what you go through, what's been going on, so on and so forth, and I promise you, your doctor might open up and tell you some things and you'll be surprised on how human your doctor is and how much you might have in common with them and what they can offer and provide. So, you know, let's, let's see these doctors. Let's talk to the dentists. Let's talk about fluoride-free toothpaste. 
Let's talk about charcoal toothpaste. Let's talk about different toothbrushes, the charcoal toothbrush, bristles, how it cleans. Let's talk about the different mouthwashes. Let's talk about the different ways of, you know, maintaining our hygiene and our bodies with these professionals and get to the bottom of it. Let's really talk about what's going on with our bodies to these physicians. And let's do our own research so we can actually have something to talk to them about. If you don't have any information, you can't ask them a question and get anything out of it because you didn't have anything set up. You didn't have anything prepared. You just went there for a checkup hoping nothing was wrong. But you can take an action to make sure nothing's wrong just by feeding yourself what it needs. Exercising so you can keep your body in the best shape possible so you can get those vitamins and nutrients and minerals to your body. So you definitely got to keep your cardiovascular up. And you want to also make sure your cognitive system as far as your brain and processing information is smooth. So you definitely want to get enough sleep. So keep those things in mind. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you. Please comment. Let me know what you think. Share this episode. It might not be for you, but it might be for somebody you know. Well, that's our time for the day. Let's keep a peace of mind and love in your heart. One. <laughs>